Welcome back. This week we're going to talk about a couple topics that come up kind of all the time around the tech support lines, emails, and all that. Uh, what's your minimum C rating that you should use? Uh, what kind of motor you should be selecting for your application in regards to the size and the KV? And then if you want to do censored or censorless. So let's start with censored or censorless because that, that seems to be the easiest one to talk about because it comes down to your basic application. Uh, are you going to be running on a track against other folks all the time? If that's the case, censored for sure. Uh, the difference in the feel for throttle response and brake response is a big difference when you're running on a track and the ability to have a lot of control over the RPM change under load is a little bit better in a censored setup. So for track racers or people that are looking to build a race rig, uh, censored for sure. Sensor less stuff is great if you're looking to save some bucks or maybe you're not too worried about you know, throttle feel. You're looking to go fast all the time and uh, you got a lot of elements to deal with. The sensor list stuff is a little easier to protect from the uh, water damage, mud damage, stuff like that because there's no sensor harness to worry about. Uh, there's no sensors inside the motor and that sort of thing as well. Um, so sensor sensor list kind of comes down to your, your basic application. If you're going to be running on a track against other people all the time, censored for sure. Um, if you're more of a casual runner, just looking to go fast, have a great time, censorless is great. The next one that I want to talk about is comes up daily almost. What's the minimum C rating that I should get for my application? This often comes down to how hard you drive. And for the most part, if you want to have a good time, 50 to 70 C rating, and at, at least if you're going to use a ton of full throttle and run a go fast system. If you're more casual, cruising around, uh, you know, at loose surfaces, you're not looking to pull full throttle often, then lower C rating, then that's probably going to be fine. You're not going to notice a ton of differences. Uh, but for the most part, if you're going racing, the higher the C rating, the better. Or if you're looking to have a great time and pull lots of trigger all or pull lots of throttle all the time, rather, high C rating is the way to go. There's a misconception that the, the battery pack is gonna push the current, and if you get too high of a C rating, you're gonna damage the speed control. That's not really the case. It's kinda actually the other way around. Often, if the C rating is too low, you're gonna get bad performance and a lot of heating issues because the battery pack can't give up the current that the system is asking for. So, kind of a, a slippery slope. You can't get fooled by a super high C rated packs. You wanna kinda do a little bit of research to what folks are using and find out good brands, and and trusted brands and stuff like that. People that you know, other racers are using is a good way to look at it. Other bashers is a, always ask around. I think that's why a lot of you guys find Hobby Wing is because you, you chat with folks. I get that a lot. I've been talking to my buddies. They say Hobby Wing's great. Same thing applies to the batteries. Uh, check with your RC friends. Check with the local tracks and the hobby shops. They'll point you in the right direction. Um, and then finally, uh, what KV do you choose for your application? And now this for racing, it's it's pretty direct. A lot of the classes are out there. You can monkey see, monkey do. If they're running brand XYZ's seven and a half turn, you can run the Hobby Wing seven and a half turn. Um, for the spec classes like 13.5, 17.5, stuff like that, you kind of have to use those turn motors. But the rest of the world, the bashers and the, the casual racers or the open mod guys that are, are not wanting to have the, the same setup that the racer guys use, what are they going to do? So... No simple answers here. A lot of it comes down to, let's say you're, you're building a fresh rig, you've never done this before, and you need to know what motor to pick off this giant list of motors, what KV, and there, there's not a, a real easy answer there. A lot of it comes down to the voltage in the vehicle itself. So there's three sizes of motors that we offer in the 10 scale platform. The 3650 sensor motors are the two pole race style motors. Uh, rated by turns more often than KV. Then there's a 3652 four pole motor that's rated by KV. And there's a 3660 size motor that's also rated by KV. Now, depending on where you go in those lineup and KV, the lower KV uh, is gonna be okay for the higher voltage applications, three cell and stuff like that. And then the higher KV is gonna be for the lower voltage, two cell and stuff like that. So like 4,000 KV and lower, is going to be okay for three cell and above that above 4000 kv you're kind of going to stick with two cell most of the time that's my personal recommendation you'll find out on the specifications of the motors they all say that they can run with three cell and that's more about functionality than it is trigger pulling good times if you will 
sometimes uh, we get tons of people to tell us, hey, I'm running the 4300 or 4600 KV on 3S. I love it. It's great. And then we got another guy that says, hey, I run that same setup on 3S and it, it's too hot for my likings. What do I got to do to cool it down? And I'll, I'll tell those guys, you know, run a, lo a lower KV motor for the most part because that generally is an indication that they're, they're, they're getting after it on the throttle and having a good time. So KV is one thing, size is the next. Two-wheel drive vehicles, mostly like the 3650 uh, and the 3652 motors. If you're going to use a two-pole censored setup, you're probably going to the track and racing. Uh, if you're going to use a four-pole setup, a lot of the tracks and racing rules for a, all of the two-wheel drive classes, you're only allowed two-pole censored motors, so you can't choose the 3652. you got to get the right turn for whatever the class you're running. Most of the off-road stuff uh, for a two-pole, two-wheel drive, you're going to be between a five-and-a-half turn and probably like a seven-and-a-half turn, depending on the size of the track, track and traction conditions and all that. Bigger tracks, more traction, faster motors, smaller tracks, less, tr less traction, going to be higher turn or slower motors, so to speak. The four-wheel drive off-road is a little different. There's 4x4 short course, there's another 4x4 truggy class, and there's four-wheel drive 10-scale uh, buggy. In these applications, the four-wheel drive buggy classes, the rules are going to tell you you can only use uh, two-pole 540 size motors. So again, we're back to the turn motors. Some of the guys run as low as a 4.5 in there. Most of them are 5.565 range for most of the tracks. When you get over to 4x4 short course, that's all four-pole motors. Rules racing, you can only use the 3652 four-pole motors. Most of the tracks that run 4x4 short course class or Pro 4, they don't follow the rules. And in that regard, you're going to want to use the 3660 size motors because they're longer um, and they're going to perform a lot better. But no. Same thing for the, the truggy motors. If there's no rules involved, the 3652s are going to work and the 3660 size motors are going to be a little bit better. Now for most of this stuff, we still haven't talked about the KV, all these race classes are going to be two cell only, so that's all a yawner, snoozer, you're going to go with the higher KV stuff real easy. 4300, 4600, there's a 5200 KV that we offer that I've run a little bit in two cell and it's a beast, but a little, a little tricky on the temperatures for some of the applications. Alright, so to summarize, when you're choosing KV, it's a lot of rambling, maybe it's not going to make a lot of sense until you sit down and think about what you're building or what you're putting a motor into but uh picking the kv the size for your voltage in your vehicle is the the ultimate goal here so you have to obviously you have a vehicle already you're probably going to have an idea what voltage you're going to run and that's going to help you determine what size motor you're going to use and what kv motor you're going to use as well for Higher voltage, you're going to use lower KV and larger motors is the idea there. For the lower voltage applications, 2S, you're going to be sticking with the 540 size or what is the 3650, 3652 size motors in the 4000 KV and above. Everybody else, uh, for the three cell and higher applications, you're going to be lower than 4000 KV. Thanks for watching, everybody. If you do have any questions, feel free to shoot me an email, charlie at hobbywing.com. Thanks a lot.